Hello, everyone. This is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. I don't know if the same is true where you live right now, but this week for me, schools are starting to get back into session. Some are in person, others have a hybrid flex, while others are starting totally online. In addition, we're starting to see a number of decisions rolling out of high school and collegiate sports programs and conferences, sports that typically would have begun this fall, like NCAA Division I American football and others. Well, there's been a lot of announcements around postponing and canceling and revising game schedules and programs. And so much of all of this is due to the fear and uncertainty of the global pandemic and the novel coronavirus that's impacting our world. Well, how does one cope? Whether you're a high school athlete whose season just got shifted, or you're playing club soccer with a reduced travel schedule, whether you're a college soccer program that's shutting down or rescheduling, or whether you're a professional player that's gone from a bubble tournament to playing in empty stadiums, today on From the Touchline, I want to share with you the most powerful way that you and I can cope and survive and even thrive in the midst of so much turmoil, unrest, and uncertainty. So stay with us, and we'll be back right after this. Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have. He has the hat trick. The second in his career. The third of the night. The hat trick hero. Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. To the corner. Goes towards the near post. And you're on the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! As a chaplain, one of the most common questions that I ask an athlete or a coach or someone that I'm sitting with and counseling is, have you ever been here before? Now, that might seem like an odd question, but the exercise that ensues is to have the person thinking through their life and to come up with a situation or scenario that closely resembles the situation that they find themselves in. When we've arrived at a similar situation, I usually then go on to ask, what was helpful during that time? What was not? And almost by way of review, we can begin to peel back the layers and understand how God perhaps has given them the strength or enabled them to develop new, helpful tools or learning out of that situation in the past that might help them in the midst of their present trouble or crisis. But the truth is, sometimes it can be really difficult to remember the past or even have a bit of sense of clarity because you're in the midst of this current storm that someone's faced with. And it can be for a lot of reasons that it's really muddy and unclear. You know, maybe we're spiritually, emotionally, or even physically weary. Or sometimes it's because we feel that things are moving so fast or things are so overwhelming that we can't even get a break. We can't even get a rest or a pause. Or sometimes we can't look back clearly enough to see how God might have brought us through or out of a difficult circumstance because we feel that we're still stuck somehow. We're still trapped in a vicious cycle, and we can't escape, and maybe the pain is either too great or it's too fresh for us to see a way forward. Well, today I want to share some words from the prophet Isaiah that I believe can be tremendously helpful for someone, no matter where you're at in the midst of a pandemic or in the midst of your own life crisis or trial. But first, let me give a little bit of context. The prophet Isaiah lived in a difficult time. As a prophet, his writings were most likely during a time of decline for the kingdom of Israel that saw the expansion of the Assyrian Empire that came right up to the doorstep of the city of Jerusalem. Isaiah had been told by God what fate awaited the nation of Judah, and essentially exile and captivity at the hands of a foreign nation were uh, on the horizon. And sure enough, Judah eventually is overtaken by the Babylonians, and the warnings of the prophet Isaiah come true. But Isaiah also foresaw the restoration of Israel. And in the late part of the book that bears his name in his writings, that bear his trademark writing and prophetic and poetic voice, Isaiah writes words of comfort and hope for God's people. In the chapters that precede what I want to share with you today, chapters 24 and 25, we see this devastation that befalls the earth. And I encourage you to read chapter 24 of Isaiah this week. It'll sound a lot and look a lot like our world has gone through in these past eight months during the COVID crisis and everything else that's gone on since. But we begin to see that this hopeful song arises almost midway through chapter 24. 
and it reverberates and resounds again in chapter 25. And so in the midst of great devastation, there is a song of hope. There are words of, of, and songs of praise about God that spill over into chapter 26 as well. And it's here that this particular verse, a small refrain, is where I want to land with us today. So if you've got a Bible, if you've got something, read Isaiah 26, 3 through 4, verses 3 through 4. In it, the prophet writes, and I'll, I'll say what he writes right here. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. The New English translation puts it this way. You keep com- completely safe the people who maintain their faith, for they trust in you. Trust in the Lord from this time forward, even in Yahweh, the Lord, an enduring protector. And one more translation, Eugene Peterson in his paraphrase, The Message, puts it this way. People with their minds set on you, you keep completely whole, steady on their feet, because they keep at it and don't quit. Depend on God and keep at it, because in the Lord God you have a sure thing. Now, remember that we're in the midst of a song here, so there's a rhythm and a flow to these words, a strong poetic sense that's really designed to be seared into the memory. Many of you listening will know that in football and soccer, top-level athletes and coaches must be focused, laser-focused in what they do in order to perform at high levels and and to earn and achieve high success and, and get that breakthrough. Just like other artists and performers or entertainers, there's typically a focal point that helps to drive inspiration and creativity, or, or just even to press through a difficult time where, where the words or, or the goals just won't come. And when we consider the outcomes here, that God keeps in perfect peace his people, we see that they're the ones that are focused and fixated on God. This is a powerful tool in the midst of the surrounding chaos of the world, not only of Isaiah's day, but of ours as well. Well, the Hebrew word here describes the one who's kept in peace. It is the dependent one. It's the one being supported. It's it's the one who's dependent on God, the one who trusts in God. And so we see there's this dependent attitude, not not an independent one that is necessary here. The heart of the one who who God keeps in perfect peace is is the heart of someone who's malleable and shapeable. It's the one who's willing and and ready to be be moved and, and who trusts in God. You know, I read and see a lot on social media and elsewhere where it encourages people, especially athletes and others, to reach deeper inside of themselves, almost as if the answer toward peace or security or success is is locked away deep within some recess of the soul, and it just needs to be somehow unlocked by more effort, by more mental training or more spiritual uh, sayings. But the truth is, the prophet here is saying that those kept in peace— are those who need God, the ones who find their support in Him and not in themselves. You know, many times I've sat with athletes and coaches, officials, and others in the game who have absolutely come to the end of themselves, and they haven't found any solace. They haven't found any peace or strength to go forward. They're exhausted and they're worn out. They have nothing left. And it's not until they begin handing these things over to God and they begin to depend on Him that they actually experience any sort of recovery. So what does it look like to keep one's mind steadfast or fixed on God? Well, let me offer three simple things here. First, the steadfast mind is constantly in God's Word, constantly reading and studying and meditating on the Bible and its meaning for one's life. In the same way that an athlete has to perform countless repetitive drills and exercises to form a foundation and to keep those things, those skills, those talents fresh and and sharp, So too, the one who keeps their mind fixed on God, the one who knows what God is saying, what God's about, what God is speaking into a situation, it's that person who is spending time reading and studying and listening to God's message through the Bible, through the words of of Scripture. If Bible reading isn't part of your daily rhythm and exercise and routine, let me encourage it to become a huge priority. It's so easy nowadays. You can download the Bible app. You can, you can go out or, or you can stay in and buy on Smile Amazon. Go get a study Bible. Get it in a readable, understandable translation. Take, take a verse. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Saturate yourself in God's Word, and this will help you exponentially. 
The second thing is prayer. You know, sometimes we might feel intimidated. We might feel like we aren't eloquent with our words, or we might feel guilty like we can't speak with God without feeling some sort of shame or or uh, remorse, but but truly, our words can be as simple as a sinful man who once stood before God, and he was so embarrassed that all he could say was this, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That simple prayer right there, my friends, was was enough to uh, restore and rebuild the relationship and, and put that man on, on the way toward a, a redeemed relationship with God. Well, well, prayer is really a simple conversation with God. It's a sharing of our hopes and dreams. It's a, a surrendering of our struggles and sins. It, it includes confession. It includes petitioning for God to act on our behalf or to move uh, for us or, or sometimes to move us. And there's so much more to be said about prayer. But let me tell you, if you're reading God's Word, if you're studying and listening to it, you will begin to see the way that prayer ought to look. And you can begin to utilize prayer in some powerful ways. And there's different ways to pray. But whether you go uh, into a match or you're heading out for a training session or you're, you're traveling in the car or the bus or the plane, prayer can be that simple, ongoing dialogue with God and a time to also listen and hear Him speaking to you. Well, finally, the third thing that I'd offer is that uh, it helps keep one focused and fixed on God when one is part of a community. By joining other believers, by being together. Now, nowadays, that might mean that it's a Zoom session or a FaceTime call. It might mean some social distancing and wearing a mask. But to be with others, a chaplain, a pastor, a priest, a, a small group of others that are like-minded, finding people that are, that are reading and studying and praying and listening to God just like you are, just like that journey that you're on, they will be like a team to you. They'll surround you in the midst of these times, and they'll help encourage and support you when you don't understand or your struggle, your struggle to just go on. Well, in closing, I want to pray a prayer that, would, that we would be a people who are kept in perfect peace. Maybe for you, this season, this year has been so full of turmoil and unrest that you have doubts about whether peace is even possible or wh- whether the game will, will ever look the way it once did. But the truth is, God keeps his people in a peace that goes beyond understanding. It's not some magical thing. It comes from those who strive to maintain a faith and trust in God. It it comes from a dependent person, a dependent people. We need God. It comes, as Peterson puts it, as we keep at it and we don't quit. We're, We're depending on God and we keep depending on God, whether we are successful or whether we go through trial and tribulation. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, keep us in perfect peace as we strive to stay focused, trusting, and dependent upon you. Teach us what that means. Help us to read your word, the Bible, with understanding. Move us to pray in all places and with an endless spirit. Show us fellow companions that they may walk with us in these times. May we experience the peace that surpasses human understanding. May we share with loved ones, teammates, co-workers, the peace that only you can give. May our trust and our dependence be unwavering in these uncertain times. We ask these things, steady on our feet, of you. Amen. Well, may God keep you and your loved ones in his perfect peace this day and in the midst of all that is to come. This is Rev. Brad coming to you from the Touchline.